are allowing the environment to be destroyed at an unsettling rate. The polar ice caps are irreversibly melting, and recent studies estimate that by 2100, sea levels will have risen by 3 to 6 feet, affecting billions of people living in coastal cities around the world. In the same amount of time, more species will go extinct than in the previous 65 million years combined. Particularly troubling are signs that a massive krill die-off is imminent, partially the result of increased absorption of the high levels of CO2 from our atmosphere, as oceans act as a carbon sink for our own environmental negligence. With krill basically at the bottom of the food chain, an extinction or near-extinction event would be catastrophic for humanity, and more importantly, the planet as a whole. Let that sink in. This isn't the distant future. These are things that we all have to deal with within our lifetime. So maybe it's time we stop shrugging off the reality of the situation. Raising awareness of an issue can only take us so far, and at some point it becomes necessary to discuss the root causes so that we may dismiss the outright denial of climate change from conservatives and the ineffectual solutions to it from well-intentioned liberals in order to propose real solutions. So what is the underlying cause of climate change? In short, capitalism. It is the sole function of capitalism to expand production and increase profits. The competitive nature of capitalism means that if one capitalist fails to expand, even if expansion is detrimental to our own survival, then another capitalist will do so in their place. Thus, in the interest of a corporation's survival, they will expand, no matter the cost. Power generation, resource extraction, manufacturing, and transportation in the hands of the capitalists will never be environmentally sustainable. What's rather interesting about this, and tells you something about the nature of our society, is that those same CEOs and managers who are trying to convince the public that, that it's a liberal hoax know perfectly well that it's extremely dangerous. They have the same beliefs that you and I have. But, uh, so they're, they're caught in a kind of an institutional contradiction. As leaders of major corporations, they have an institutional role. Now, that is to maximize short-term profit. And if they don't do that, they're out, and someone else is in who does do it. So it's they don't. It's basically, it's, institutionally speaking, it's not a choice that's going to happen in the major institutions. So they may know that they're mortgaging the future of their grandchildren, and in fact, maybe everything they own will be destroyed. But uh, uh, they're caught in a trap of uh, institutional structure. That's what happens in market systems. The same CEOs who loudly denounced Trump's withdrawal from the Paris Climate Accord were the ones whose companies were lobbying the hardest in favor of America's withdrawal. The same corporations which announced their commitment to combating global climate change are the ones who contribute the most to it. You cannot trust the capitalists to do the right thing because capitalist logic dictates that maximizing profits takes precedence over any and all ethical, moral, or practical concerns that we may have for the environment. To some extent, this is true of the state itself, especially the so-called capitalist democracies of the West. We cannot trust these state actors who are institutionally beholden to capitalist goals and logic to act in our interests over the interests of their benefactors. Since the global capitalist system is responsible for the wholesale destruction of the environment in pursuit of ever greater profits, and capitalism is fundamentally incompatible with environmental sustainability, the most effective way to combat global climate change is not through promoting a restrained, reformed, or green capitalism, as this would at best delay the inevitable. Green capitalism is still capitalism, and its products are only profitable because of the relative scarcity compared to their non-green counterparts. The solution must be to combat the economic system of capitalism itself, as well as the nation-states which uphold its global dominance.